Hi, I'm Bob Birch. Welcome to the Working Differently in Extension podcast. Great to have you along today. Um, as we welcome Neil Clemmy. Uh, Neil is a 4-H youth development educator and department head at the University of Wisconsin Extension in Iron County. He was recently uh, presenting about his work with uh, youth and community development at the NACDEP CDS Community Development Conference uh, in Big Sky, Montana. Neil, welcome to the podcast. Hi, hi, thanks for having me. So tell me about Iron County, Wisconsin. Okay, um, Iron County is in far northern Wisconsin, very rural community. Um, and when I say rural, I mean two hours to a shopping center, a place to go. We do our school shopping about an hour and a half, two hours away. Um, there's about, there's about 6,000 people in Iron County, so a very small county. Um, there's two main communities, one in northern Wisconsin, in, in northern Iron County, which is Hurley. Um, and that's very, I'd say, ATV, snowmobile, outdoor rec kind of focus. And then Mercer is in southern Iron County, which is um, a retirement community. Um, it was becoming a retirement community. It has, uh, it has a small school there, you know, graduating class of like eight. Um, Hurley has a graduating class of roughly 40 to 50 kids every year. Um, so two small school, two schools, but real, relatively small communities. Um, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great place to live if you like being out in the woods and, and being outdoors. So how, how does that sort of uh, dynamic affect extension work? It may be at least for you and relatively big county, small population. And... Um, it's, it's made, you know, we're uh, getting out to the kids has been easy because there's only the two schools um, to, to, to work with. Um, and they're pretty open to anything that, you know, you want, if you want to get young people involved in something, the schools have been really supportive of, you know, getting you involved, getting you connected to the kids. Um, it, we, we don't have a boys and girls club. We don't have YMCAs. We, you know, the 4-H program, there's Boy Scouts, but it's a relatively small program. So Boy Scouts is pretty much, or uh, 4-H is pretty much it. Um, so when, when I offer a program to the schools, they're pretty receptive and, and they, they let me in. Um, I think the interesting part for me has been this idea of trying to connect kids to the community and the natural and this community's natural assets, because um, you would think these kids camp, you would think they mountain bike, you would think they hike. Um, but you know, when I got here five years ago, I found out that they re really, their connection was zipping through it on an ATV or on a snowmobile. So um, that, that, that was kind of a, a strange thing for me to discover. I, I kind of assumed everyone up here, you know, they all hunt, they, they're out in the woods, but they ride out on their ATVs and, and they, you know, it's, it's a very motorized sports centered community. So that kind of, this idea of them being pretty receptive, I think, you know, leads us to some of the work that you've been doing about getting the kids involved in community vitality kind of projects. So how did that get started? Well, my background, um, uh, my background was in youth and governance, youth and teen court programs. So getting youth involved in kind of um, connecting to uh, leadership, those types of leadership opportunities. But um, when I started here in 2012, um, our office kind of put together a multidisciplinary plan um, in the office. Of how do we want to address making Iron County a healthy community? Um, and I, I kind of, thought that my approach to that, and we kind of looked at how family living can approach that, how community development can approach that. And then I looked at how does youth development create a healthy Iron County? <clears throat> and uh, so my approach to it was, you know, we need to get youth voice involved in things. We need to get young people um, active in, in meaningful leadership opportunities. Um, when I went to the kids and asked them if they wanted a teen court or a youth and governance program, that was not something they were interested in. So I had to regroup and kind of go, okay, well, what else can we do? Um, I have a co community development educator here, or he was a community development educator here, Will Andreessen, who was very much interested in getting young people involved. Um, young people meaning um, ages 15 through 25 or 30 even, um, because it's kind of a uh, audience that's kind of left out of some of those things, especially in our community. Um, so, 
so when I got here, I, I started looking at ways that I could plug kids into the thing. And it started out really small, like the fair board was doing some strategic planning. So I, I started bringing young people to the Iron County uh, fair board meetings. They decided they wanted to know, you know, how do we get more teenagers to come to the fair or stay at the fair? Um, and I said, well, let's ask the kids. Let's ask these guys. What, what, what would bring them here? So I brought them in. We created a survey. Um, we went to the school and had the kids fill out the students at the school during lunch hour, fill out the survey. You know, what kinds of things do you love about the fair or have you ever been to the fair? And a surprisingly low number of teenagers actually had been to the fair. So we said, well, what kinds of things would bring you to the fair? So it was really a, an activity, activity or a very base level. Let's get these kids opinions out there. Um, uh, from that, you know, the, the fair board determined, you know, they needed to maybe look for better rides. Um, they needed to uh, incre make, uh, bring different bands in um, that would provide music that's more appropriate for young people. You know, <laughs> one of the kids' comments I, was really funny, and the fair board kind of laughed, and they were, he said, you know, we're not going to come and listen to polka. And, and so they, they really, they took that seriously, actually, which I was really surprised about. They, they said, okay, well, maybe we need to hire different bands. And they actually looked outside the community. It was really local. Like the bands were always, you know, graduates of early high school <laughs> kids. You know, and it was really, um, they never went out and found bands from outside the community. And they, they actually went out and found this band from Minnesota that played music for older audiences, but also played modern uh, local music or current music. And, and you, you saw instantly more teenagers showing up at the fair and the fair board loved it. They thought that was great. So from there, then I started looking for other projects and um, we had this waterfall brochure that was created. We have 16 waterfalls in Iron County um, and great places for people to hike out to. And, um, but the waterfall brochure had gotten so old and, and it, we just had photocopies of it. We didn't have a color copy of it anymore. So I decided I, I went to the school and I, I did kind of a asset uh, identification project with the kids in, in Mercer School. And I said, so what are some things that we could um, promote in our county? And they actually luckily identified the waterfalls as something that they thought would be a cool project. So we created uh, promotional materials um, waterfall uh, brochures including gps coordinates so people could plug it into their phone and get directions to it um, we created a campsite brochure um, four seasons of activity brochure just kind of a general what do you do in iron county um, and we created a new promotional sticker uh, to promote the county we've always had iron county we've always had this fe sticker uh, you know the elemental symbol for iron and then the iron the kids decided they wanted to create one that's live life using the FE in life and highlighting that um, to kind of promote the outdoor activities. There's a website that's linked to the live life um, campaign, uh, promotional stuff. So they created a little bumper sticker for that, which uh, you see on cars all over Iron County now. And um, so it was kind of connecting kids to the assets. And from there, I started doing the youth first impressions projects, uh, promo uh, project, um, taking kids to other communities and identifying community assets. And um, we're building on their knowledge of what makes a healthy community, and a strong community, um, you know, and, and, from, and then it kind of grew into that to what we were out in Montana presenting on with the design charrettes. Um, I could, uh, the first impressions project was awesome. I've done like three or four of them. Other counties have done them as well. Those have been done around the country for years, um, but I kind of recreated it using uh, gearing the questions more towards young people. Uh, we'd done, we had done it with the original version, and um, it was, you know, the kids were confused. The questions were difficult for them to understand. And then I also decided, realized we needed to build better trainings and so they understood maybe the questions. You know, um, one of the questions was, how are the roadways and you're in the community? And um, we had an answer that said they were curvy. You know, that's not exactly what we were getting at. We, we, we don't really care if they're curvy. We want to know, are they beaten down? Do they need to be repaired? And, you know, how well do they take care of them? And, you know, so we realized, oh, we need to really get these kids to understand a little bit more about what they're supposed to be evaluating. So we've built in, created some trainings and some um, little modules that help them understand that better and, and help them think more critically. Um, 
I still look at things from a youth development standpoint, um, even though it's community development work kind of, um, I still look at, you know, the critical thinking skills, the problem solving skills, those life skills that kids need to, to develop to be positive adults. So, um, you know, so that from there, then last year, last couple of years, we've been working with that Todd Johnson with the Wisconsin design team and bringing young people in on the design charrette process, which was awesome because we got to bring them, get kids from Hurley involved in our project in Hurley, which, um, you know, the best youth development projects are meaningful to the young people that are participating in, in them. So when they got to see that there's this trail possibility through, through Hurley and to trailheads and they got to be a part of it they got really excited so um yeah yeah uh, i want to get back to the whole thing so. <laughs> no that's okay uh uh yeah i want to talk I definitely talk about the trail project because i think okay. it's, it's really it's really interesting but uh, you know just go back a little bit to the first impression survey um you know, I, I thought there was a couple things that were really fascinating about it. One is, you know, in your example with the fair board, I, you know, the receptiveness, you know, might be looked at from the leaders might be like, well, this is market research. So, of course, we're going to listen to our to our audience. Right. They want this. So we'll, we'll provide it. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe that was that a little bit different when you talk about the first impression survey. Like how did community leaders sort of look at that? And uh, as far as the, the kids giving that feedback and. And well, you know, we've talked a lot, you know, and you hear a lot about, you know, building communities and the attracting and retaining young people piece. And, you know, and I kind of approached it with them. Well, and I would say those early processes, the brochures and the fair board really built that relevance to them, to the adults in the community. They started to go, oh, they do have something to say. Um, I always use the example, one of our uh, community county planners uh when i suggested it he his comment to me was um they're just going to want water parks and roller coasters and and i said you know you're not giving these kids enough credit they have some more they have deeper thoughts than that and and, and then you know through the waterfall brochure and the fairboard they really started to understand well these kids do have something important to say and and if you want these kids to come back to the community that's how i approach it if you want these kids to come back to this community you have to get them involved in some of this stuff and that connection to the community is what's going to, you know, maybe when they're 30 and they're starting to think about raising a family, then they're going to go, Oh, you know, I loved raising growing up in Hurley. I love growing up in the, in the Northern, in Northern Wisconsin. I'm going to go back there and, and raise a family in that community. So that's how I approached it. You know, really that connection to the community and that retaining and attracting young people piece. Um, um, but, you know, and then, so when we started doing the first impressions, you know, when we, went and gave our report to the first community that we, we did the first impressions with, you know, we had probably half the audience that would get up, stand up and challenge the kids and you go, Oh, you didn't, it's there, it's there. You didn't see it. And we would have somebody go, you know, the point is if they didn't see it, then it's not here. And you know, if people don't see what's in a community. So from there they built signs, they put better signage up in their community to tell people where things are. So, you know, they started to implement the things the kids told them. And I think they've, most communities, you know, you'll see it, they've seen a difference now. Um, more people coming to their attractions and coming to their events. And, um, you know, I, I think it, it's, it's really building that credibility in the young people's opinions. And, you know, I think every small rural community has that challenge. You know, teenagers are, are considered kind of sometimes the problem in the community. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of shifting it from the problem to the solution has been been fun to watch it's been really fun to watch here in Hurley and Iron County because um, you know now I have people calling me hey we're working on this project do you think you could bring some of your the kids that did this with you you think you could bring them to this project because I mean, we'd really like to hear what they have to say you know the Chamber of Commerce here in town has become a huge supporter of mine and and, and asked me to bring kids to everything you know um, you know I'm almost to the point where I have to go well I don't really know if they're gonna have a meaningful role in that so maybe let's look for a better project and we'll work on that later. So, but it, it's really changed attitudes of adults in the community towards the kids. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about the trail project. You, you, sure. you have used this word a couple of times and I, I have to confess uh, it's a new word to me um, charette. is charrette. Yeah. Can you talk about charrette a little bit? It was a new word for me a couple of years ago too. It's, and I, it, it's, it's got something to do with using art 
because the pro the process involves drawing, hand drawing pictures. Um, I believe it's French. Uh, I don't know. Todd Johnson, um, he's at UW, UW River Falls. Um, he worked with a team in Minnesota who had done design charrettes. Um, I don't have the book here. There's a book um, about the, the Minnesota design team. And they would, the process is they go into a community. It's really intensive. We go, we went in on Thursday um, and you stay till Sunday and Thursday you get a tour from the community. You hear their ideas and things that they like Thursday and Friday. And then you hear things, ideas of things that they would like to see in their community, things they love about their community, things they could see improvements, things they want to highlight. Um, and then Saturday is a, you, and then there's a community in, uh, input piece on Friday night where everybody gives you input. Um, and then we take all that input on Saturday and the design team, which is made up of, you know, landscape architects, architects, city planners, uh, designers, um, uh, extension staff. Um, and then we take all that input and then we make a, create a presentation to the community using their, giving them their input back to them um, from a designer's, this is what you could do to, to do that. Um, and it's a, you stay with the families, like you're housed in their homes, so you get to talk to individuals. So then when you come together, you're kind of hearing kind of the things that they weren't comfortable saying in front of everybody. You, you, well, this is what they told me at the around the fireplace last night, around the TV last night, you know, and then you get to you get all that feedback, and that all goes into the presentation that you give on Saturday. So then the community, we did one in Bailey's Harbor a couple of years ago, where there was over 200 and some people that showed up to the community wide presentation um, to hear what the design team had come up with, and you know there was some pushback by a few people. Um, but for the most part, it was their ideas given back to them through the, the presentation process. So, and, and the drawings are all hand drawn, which I think really makes it seem more, you know, we can't come in with a design in mind. And then, you know, it's, it's, it really shows that we listened to them and brought it out. And, you know, the great, the good artists in the group do most of the drawing and the rest of us kind of just color in and help out, but, and then, and, but come up with, and then we're all giving input to the final presentation. And, um, you know, then on Sunday we leave and head back to our homes, but it was, um, then that was the big charrette process. And the one that was done here in Hurley was just done in one day. Um, we had a listening session here in town um, at the courthouse and then, there were some tours that the kids ended up leading. Um, then there was the listening session and then the rest of the day we spent planning. And then at seven o'clock at night, we had the, the presentation to the, to the community members, which, you know, 50 to 60 people showed up to, which is a good number in a community of 1500 people. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, it was a good number. And it was, it was a representative representative group of like, you know, we had non-motorized people there, motorized people there. We had city county board members, city, commissioners and we had we had a good representation of the community there so we were able to you know and, and that process was small we were just looking at two where can we put some trailheads and then connect the trail between to um to to, de to develop this trail system here in, in the, re the regional trail system so um so the, those are the two different charrettes that have happened um you know, and but there's been a there's been numerous full weekend charrettes that have happened around the state that Todd is that Todd Johnson has has, has led. So, um, and on the trailhead or in the trail project, um, yeah. the you had kids for each kids on the design team. Yeah, uh, what happened was the during the tour in the morning. Um, I don't know. The adults were less vocal than they than we thought they were going to be. So the but the teenagers were very vocal. Like they, they're like, no, you can't put a park there because that's where the boats drive through and the boats are gonna park there. And in the summer, this place is packed. So you can't put, you can't put a trailhead there because this park is too busy already. Um, or, you know, you can't put that there because so-and-so's brother's uncle owns that and they're never gonna let you do that. You know, and the kids knew all that. So they got some great, the kids kind of just jumped up and took the lead on that project um, and leading the tours and you know it just kind of happened where then when we started doing the the drawing 
um, the kids were with me and, and they're like, well, why don't we just incorporate them in and, and help them, they can help us with the planning. And it kind of turned out to be a really cool process because I saw these, you know, professors from Stevens Point and professors from um, different universities who were on the design team. They were really teaching these high school kids about community design. And we had one kid who was, uh, plans to go to school for civil engineering ended up getting an internship out of the process. You know, he graduated this year and got an internship at one of the local engineering companies, so uh, firms. So it was it was a really cool experience to see them step up and take, they really took leadership. They did uh, part of the presentation in the evening. They ended up going, well, I have an idea for a playground um, using the mining theme of our history in the playground. Can we draw that? And they were like, sure. So we let them actually create some playground equipment and and draw some, you know, stuff. They incorporated technology into it. They thought we should have Snapchat filters at certain spots along the trail, which, you know, no one our age or older is going to think of that. You know, but they thought it would be really cool if when we came to this point in the trail, we could take our picture and there would be like kayaks around. You know, we could, it would, it would tell us what we're doing there and stuff and, you know, so, so they, they really incorporated some cool stuff into it and um, created some badges labeling where the trails go to. This trail goes to kayaking. This trail goes to hiking. You know, it was really fun to watch them get involved in that too. So, yeah, they kind of took the lead on the whole project um, and led the, led the team around. So, Is there something about um, sort of your experience, your philosophy that, I mean, this is your background, but it it seems to me that there's a certain attitude that this is possible, right? I mean, like you said, like the community, small communities might look at the teenagers as a problem, or we might not think of them as capable of contributing in this way. Um, How did you get to that place? And and you've talked a little bit about how you're bringing people maybe along to that view as well. I I would say I grew up in the 4-H program. And mm-hmm. 4-H is a youth development program that, you know, people forget that it's not just cows and plows in 4-H. Um, you know, you don't have to have a horse or a pig or a cow to be in 4-H. For me, for I never had any of that. And I was in 4-H since I was seven. And to me, 4-H was about, you know, young people stepping up and taking leadership. You know, they ran the club meetings. They, they decide what they want to do for community service projects. So to me, that's just how I was kind of brought up through the 4-H program. Um, you know, my mom was a 4-H agent, my sister's a 4-H agent, so it's kind of runs in our family, but I would say my 4-H leader also was a great, you know, she really never spoke at 4-H meetings, at our 4-H meetings when I was a kid. The kids did all the, ran the meetings and ran, and ran the club projects, you know, and then the parents helped us make that happen, and I think, you know, um, one of the key pieces of youth development is that relationship between the young people and the adults, because there's certain places that young people, things that young people can't do without the help of an adult. Um, so I, I kind of look at my role as, okay, what do you guys want to do? And then how do I make that help you make that happen? Um, so I think um, my youth development background also, you know, my master's degree is in youth development. Um, I've seen the potential, you know, through, you know, the research and stuff of what kids can accomplish. Um, so whenever I look at anything, I kind of look at it from the, the viewpoint of, you know, how do we get teenagers involved? In this? How do we get middle school kids involved in this? And, you know, and how do we build those skills in the, these young people so that they can do these things? You know, just putting a kid there without preparing them for it is not going to be good for anybody, um, especially the teenagers, because they're going to be frustrated and not want to do it anymore. So it's, it's about... The, the building up to those things and the trainings and the, you know, just letting them know that they can do it. Um, that's what, that's, what's important. But, you know, I also think that, you know, we have an awesome office here in Iron County that, you know, looks at things from a holistic, how, how does the whole community need to be involved to make things happen? So um, I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, it but does. I, it's great. And I, I love the point about like, you know, Uh, making sure they're prepared. And I don't mean to make that sound like a way like we're trying to make them into, you know, think like us and then you're prepared to, you know, Mm -hmm. be in our meetings. But, but, you know, the example you gave of the first impression survey, just the way things were worded 
um, yeah. you know, understanding the process and things like that. I think that's a, that's a great, a great point to, yeah. so that they're comfortable contributing like we would with anybody else. Right. And, right. and maybe it is, maybe that happens too much where someone's like, well, we need, Youth yeah. representation. So let's just stick but someone gotta, in a room, right? Right, but you got to make sure that it's not a, a token position for a, a high school kid. You know, you know, and, and you you don't want one high school kid to represent the views of all high school kids because that's not never that, that's not good for any group of people. So, you know, I like to have more than one kid involved, and um, and, and I ask them to ask their friends what they what their friends think. You know, that's why we did the survey at the school rather than just having a couple of kids sitting at the fair board meeting going, you should do this, you should do this. You know, we, we actually surveyed over a couple hundred kids at the school through middle, middle school through high school to do that. So um, it's important. And it's important for me when I'm listening to someone ask me about a project that we don't, that it isn't going to be a, oh, it would be co really cute to have some kids here. You know, right. I, I don't want that. I want you to actually listen to these kids and, and pay attention. So, um, you know, and I think a lot of the programming I've done is has been focused on, even in my summer camp program, I, I have a camp planning team of high school students that helped me plan the camp and put pieces in place. And, um, you know, and I had a summer assistant who said to me a couple years ago that she's like, I really think camp is one of those things that, adults start looking at us differently in the community because they go, wow, that's a teenager watching my kids for a whole week. That really changes the way adults look at teenagers. It's, you know, something simple like that. But if you do it wrong, where the counselor isn't prepared for that, you know, we have 20 hours of training, 20 hours of training for the camper counselors to do that job. It's important that they're ready for that position so that the adults will see them as prepared. So, well, um, you, yeah, sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. you you really modeled that I think you know by bringing you brought a couple of the the kids to the NACDEP CDS Community Development Conference to co-present and you talk about why you did that and and kind of how it went. Well, I just you know, like the kids said after the presentation, it was super. It was cool to hear that. Well, they didn't realize that I was that I wasn't what they were doing was somewhat unique. They, they kind of thought everyone did that, you know, and so it was cool for them to see, um, have the voice at a bigger stage um, and, and to, to talk about what they're doing. Like they did an amazing job. Like I, I was really proud um, of the work that the, the, pro the way they presented and how they stood up there in front of, you know, these professionals, which would have been scary for me as a, as a teenager. But, um, you know, and I, I just think, we were looking at the pr presentation and I thought, well, it would be really, we're talking about engaging young people in the process. This is part of the process, the reporting out, like we should, we should have them come with us. And luckily I was able to get some grant money to make that happen. Um, you know, and, and it, I, I don't know, I just, I thought, and we did a little, little community assessment of Bozeman while we were out there and looked at their downtown and how they connect their, their, to connect their community to their assets, you know, and, and we, they kind of came back with some ideas, you know, about Hurley and things that we could do here to connect to our assets a little bit more. Um, but I just thought it was really important that the kids get the, to see the process all the way through, you know, they all received a trophy because they, we won a, an award from the Wisconsin association of community development professionals. Um, and then, and we were like, well, the kids should get a trophy too, because they were a big part of that process. So, so they all got one. And I went to some graduation parties this year and they, uh, they had them all out on their, their displays of what they did in high school. And I was like, well, that's cool. And, and, you know, they were really proud of that. They were really proud that they did that and had that done. And, you know, they're looking forward to seeing this project work through. So um, it, that presentation in Montana was just part of the process to me. And I thought they should be a part of it. And I would have had more than just the one or two kids there, but it, it coincided with a trip to Italy, and oh. I, couldn't, I couldn't compete with that. So. Big, big Sky was beautiful, but yeah, Italy it was, is, is kind of hard. Yeah, it's not Italy. <laughs> yeah. So what what's next for you? What are you working on now? Or um, I'm working on a try, kind of. I just been in touch with somebody that a couple of years ago we did an assessment, uh, social network analysis, kind of measuring the connection between the youth and adults in Iron County um, to kind of get a baseline 
of where those connections were and who are the adults that connect kids to leadership and who are the, the teenagers who connect teenagers to leadership and, and, and um, trying to measure those connections. And um, so we got a baseline of where that is. And I'm working now and trying to do a follow up because some of those kids are the seniors that are graduating now. Um, and I'd like to see where they're at after four years of being in these programs and doing first impressions and doing these rats. I'd like to see where they're at with those connections with adults, that, that, that social capital, um, um, and trying to figure out where, where, where I can go from and build on that and continue to do some of those, build those connections with youth and adults. You know, my hope, so we're going to rerun that, that, cert, that study and try and figure out, you know, hopefully this, those connections have grown. Some of them were pretty weak before. So, you know, now they've, they've met a lot of those people that were in that study before. And, I, and I'm hoping we have some stronger connections between youth and adults. And, and the first study showed, you know, that I was connected to a lot of them. And I was the, you know, I'm hoping, you know, and this sounds odd, I'm hoping that I'm not the only person that's connected to these kids now. The goal of this is to connect them to other adults in the community. And I'm hoping that, and I'm hoping that's what we find. So that's great. Cool. That sounds awesome. Uh, yeah. yeah. Good luck with that. And um, thanks. thanks for all the work that, that you've done. And thanks for joining us uh, on the podcast. I'm jealous of your waterfalls. We have one waterfall in our whole state and it's a, <laughs> it's a long tick infested hike to get, in, get to get there. So, um, so uh, yeah. So enjoy, enjoy Iron County. I hope to come and, and visit sometime. Well, anytime. I appreciate you having me on. Neil Clemmy is a 4-H youth development educator and department head with the University of Wisconsin Extension in Iron County, Wisconsin. And you've been listening to the Working Differently in Extension podcast. Quick reminder that we'll have links to some newspaper articles uh, about Neil's work uh, and uh, also to the uh, report that came out on the uh, regional trail, uh, the Iron County Regional Trail Project. Uh, we'll link all that from the show notes. You can find those at bobbirch.com. As always, you can find the uh, podcast at soundcloud.com slash working differently and follow us on Twitter. It's at WD in EXT. Thanks so much for joining us for the podcast today. Have a great day.